Hello, this is Dampro. Welcome back to my vehicle rigging tutorial series. We're in part four. In the last tutorial, we actually set up our ground detection system, and now we have some IK chains to auto rotate our uh, swing arms here and the main pin. Now we'll set up our steering and our wheel. Now, there's actually a very good bone here that's a good candidate for uh, uh, parenting this um, steering to it or the the hub itself but the problem is, is because it has an IK constraint on it uh, we can't rotate this so we do um, R to rotate we will just flip that out so um, while that bone is a good candidate uh, position wise it's a bad candidate because of that IK constraint so we will actually add a bone at that exact same position so I'm going to select this bone MCH strut.002 shift D to duplicate it and then I'm just going to resize it a little bit just so we can um, differentiate the two here. Um, when you duplicate something though, you're always duplicating that bone. You're duplicating everything that you've changed on it. So we've actually already duplicated the IK constraint that was on strut.002. So just be aware that if you do that, sometimes um, you'll have to undo some of that stuff. So I want to parent this. I'm going to rename this to mchhub.001. And I'm going to parent hub.001 to our strut.002, control P, keep offset. And then I can go back into pose mode here. Uh, as I mentioned, when we duplicated that, we actually duplicated the um, constraints as well. So I want to uh, delete our IK constraint off of our hub uh, bone right there. But now we, it is positioned, if we rotate it on its Y axis, um, we can rotate um, our hub from that point. So let's actually parent our hub to our that bone, control P to our bone, and then let's set, set up our axis locks. Now this is an MCH bone, so it's not really going to be um, uh, touched by the animator, but we can set up our axis locks just to make it a little bit easier for us. So we'll change it to Euler and lock everything but the Y rotation. And now we can rotate our hub back and forth. Next up, let's add a bone for our tire. And our tire needs to be parented to uh, our hub bone, so when we steer back and forth, but it also needs to be able to rotate around. So we will add, um, go into edit mode. I want to go to vertex select. And with alt, I'm going to select the center um, ring that goes all the way around, shift S, cursor to select it. And then I can go back to my armature in edit mode, shift A, add a new bone here. So. This is a very large one, so GZ, I'm going to drag this back down. I want to parent this bone um, to our uh, hub.001, control P, keep offset, and I also should name this. This is actually going to be an animation control, so it'll have a normal name, wheel.001. And we uh, x-axis is going this direction, of course we rotate it from the head, so um, we can lock um, the location values here because we don't want to be able to pull this away. We can change this to XYZ Euler and lock everything but X, and it's not needed for scale as well. Now it will uh, rotate only on that single axis. We can parent our tire bone to our wheel bone, control P, or tire mesh rather, to our wheel bone to make that spin. And now we can spin that around its X axis, and we can also rotate this hub and that wheel as well through that parent child relationship um, to um, change the direction that that wheel is spinning. Now there's something that you're going to run into uh, very often when you're... Uh, I want to actually add some automation to this. So I'm going to auto spin this around, but I also want the animator to be able to still animate the rotation of this uh, wheel bone. So if I was to go to my X rotation and add a driver, I would actually lose the ability to rotate that. So I'm not going to do that. In instead I'll show you the workaround here. Um, whenever you have the situation where you want to um, add some uh, a driver to a bone but you still want to have animation uh, on top of it or be able to uh, have the animator um, do that animation you can just give that bone a new parent so I'm going to select your wheel.001 shift D to duplicate scale this down I'm going to rename this maybe not quite that small mch dot wheel dot zero zero one and I'm going to parent wheel uh, dot zero zero one to MCH wheel dot zero zero one control P keep offset now because I duplicated uh, that from um, the wheel it already has our parenting here and is MCH strut dot zero zero two or hub dot zero zero one rather and now our uh, 
wheel bone is parented to that MCH bone. So we can add our driver to this one to auto spin this, and then we'll still be able to um, animate um, the rotation on top of that. So that is the workaround if you ever need to have that situation. All right, now that we have our steering and our wheel set up here, there's one final piece here, the steering link. So this is actually, um, when we rotate our hub back and forth, we want our steering link to stick to this point over here. Let me just hide this uh, bone right there real quick. So that's the point we want it to stick to. Clear out our uh, rotations, but we also need that steering link to shoot up into this chamber up here. And if you can, if I can get to a decent rotation, and there's going to be a point in the back there where I want it um, to additionally um, point up there too. So uh, I can start this by adding a bone at the steering link control, the steering link mesh. I'm going to select this loop, shift S, cursor to selected. Then I can add that bone there, shift A. Let's name this MCH steer link dot zero zero one. I want to parent steer link.001 to our MCH hub.001, control P, keep offset. So that head of that bone is going to uh, go that way. And now I need another bone up in here to act as a target because I'm going to use a constraint to always point that uh, the other end, the tail end of that bone, uh, up into this chamber. So I'm going to select this mesh and go into wireframe, and hopefully I can find that there. Shift S, cursor to selected. That is the inside of that. Um, of this chamber here. I can add a bone to that position. I need to select my armature. Edit mode. Shift A. This will be MCH steer link dot target dot zero zero one. Doesn't need to be this big. G Z by selecting that tail end and I drag that down. I need to parent this to our um, the target to our body so it always goes with that and then now since my 3d cursor is already there I can take the steer link do shift s selection to cursor and get that tail all the way over there now that's aligned it perfectly but this bone doesn't actually need to be that big so I can actually scale it down now that it's aligned uh, properly uh, just so it's a little bit easier to uh, manage here so because of the um, parenting, it's going to move with our steer link over here, or our hub when we uh, rotate it for steering. Uh, but now we need to have our constraint to actually point it back up uh, into that chamber. So I'm going to select my target, shift select the bone that gets the constraint, shift control C, and I'm going to use another inverse kinematics constraint. But everything goes wonky, uh, but don't worry, it's because of the chain length of zero. If we just change it to one, uh, now we'll, we'll behave um, properly. So now when we, let me just parent our mesh, steering link mesh to that bone, control P, bone. And now when we rotate our hub, the end here is going to stay, uh, the head of it is going to stay where, uh, in line over here, but it's always going to point back up into that chamber. So it doesn't matter which way we steer it or the height of it, it's always going to point in that direction. Now next up, it's actually kind of a pain to get in here and rotate uh, this wheel by itself, and I want to automate that with the other one. So I'm going to add a steering control on, over here. I'm going to add it out front. I'm going to go to side view, and with the root selected, shift D, G, Y, G, Z, scale this down, maybe a little bit further here. Let's rename this to steering. And then I want to parent the steering bone to our body bone. Control P, keep offset. Now how this is going to work is I want this to only move on its x-axis. So I'm going to auto-rotate this one to basically point at that. Now you can actually do this in quite a few ways. I'm going to use a transformation constraint. That's a different constraint that you can map one transform to a transform of another. So uh, for this steering bone, I do not need it for location, I do not need it for scale, I only need it for, uh, actually I do need it for location, one axis, so it only moves back and forth on its x axis, and I do not need it any for rotation. So, now that I can move it only back and forth on its local x axis, I actually want to limit how far it can go here, so I think 
about 0.5 and negative 0.5 will be good. So I'm going to add a limit location constraint. Since I won't be um, using it for Y or Z, I can lock these and I need to change this to local space. Now I just need to set up my values, negative 0.5 to 0.5. And now I can enable these values and it will positive lock when it reaches those. Uh, here's something with a um, limit location or any limit type of um, uh, limit location, rotation, or scale. So you'll notice that the, the bone will actually lock, but if I keep dragging my mouse, the transforms up there are actually still being uh, manipulated. So that is what this for transforms box is. So I always recommend that you check this so you get a positive locking um, for whatever location or rotation or scale that you're trying to limit. Now that we have our uh, control set up here, I'm going to add a transformation constraint. So when I move this on its X local X axis, I'm going to uh, drive the Y rotation of our hub bone here. So you just select our target bone, which is the steering bone, shift select our uh, MCH hub.001, shift control C, add a transformation constraint. And this is going to be location to rotation in local space and local space. And the um, transforms that we are um, uh, mapping are the X location to the Y rotation and the values of that are negative 0.5 and 0.5 and we want to drive the y rotations of our hub bone to let's say negative 30 and positive 30 and now when i move this back and forth it's going to auto rotate that wheel back and forth so the x rotation is actually driving the y rotation of that wheel now we can actually set up our steering um, wheel itself to do the same thing uh, and use the same control for that. So let's add a bone for our steering wheel. Let's get into wireframe here with that selected, that lower loop there. Shift S, cursor to selected. Let's add a bone, select our armature, edit mode, shift A. Let's name this steering wheel parent steering wheel to our body, control P, keep offset. Now let's uh, tab back into edit mode here and select this uh, top loop here, shift S cursor to selected. And now we can go back and snap our uh, tail over there, shift S selection to cursor. And this bone uh, only needs to rotate around its local Y axis, so we don't need it for a location, don't need it for scale, and single axis of rotation is Euler. So got that set up, now we can parent our steering wheel to that bone, control P, bone, make sure everything's going to go with it. All right, now we just need to set up our transformation constraint, and it's pretty much the same thing. We're going to, our steering um, control is going to uh, drive the um, steering wheel bone, shift control C, and our transformation constraint. Again, we're going X location to Y rotation, local space to local space. Need to change this to X to Y, and our minimums for X location, negative 5 to 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and we can actually uh, rotate this a little bit more. Let's do negative 50 to um, positive 50. And now when we move this back and forth, our steering wheel should rotate uh, correctly with it. I don't know if you can see that very well. There we go. So now we've uh, pretty much set up uh, everything here, uh, except for our um, springs and our pistons. So that is what will be coming up next in the next tutorial. Until then, good luck.